You are listening to Kickspot. All right, and we are back here at the Kickspot. And before the break, we were talking about the inequality uh, in America and talked about kind of the history behind um, what led up to today. Um, and so what we wanted to talk about was more what, what is at the current state. Yeah. And um, I mean, we could have talked about more. Uh, yeah. But obviously, you know, it was kind of like this shortened version of our thoughts and perspective on it. I mean, we could run like a month on this topic. And Longer just, than that. Yeah, there's so much history behind it. We can't even cover every single thing. Um, but we did bring up, you know, certain perspectives. So just take a listen to the first part of um, the podcast and um, here at the kick spot. So, yeah. So you and I are big sports fans. Yep. Like, I think I think we have an appreciation for most sports. Absolutely. You know, you know, obviously basketball is our love. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, second to me is football um, and then golf. And then baseball, hockey, you know, okay, tennis. I mean, just just all sports in general. All sports in general, yeah. right? Even Quidditch. You know, mm. no, I'm just kidding. No, no, no. Okay, that's pushing um, it. <laughs> but <laughs> it's 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 good to see. It's good to see some of our, you know, hero athletes, you know, speak up with 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 everything that's going on. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, when you're a kid, that's these are the people that you look up to. Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah you know, that. and it it it's good to especially the NBA. I've always said the NBA is the greatest league of all time. You know, no yeah. offense, NFL, MLB, NHL. You guys are great in your own way. Yeah. Uh, we're just biased because we play ball. Well, no, no. I mean, I like watching football more than, oh, more I love than football. basketball. Um, but I like playing basketball, but I. I would have never said that um, maybe like 10 years ago right? Um, about NBA being the best league. And it's just because I have a bitterness towards, you know, the Sonics leaving um, Seattle. So let's there, talk about a, that late. Yeah. So there's like a bitterness. But with everything going on, not even just recently, I think the NBA has done an excellent job just bringing awareness and the, the community service, NBA cares. I think they've done an excellent job. And that's why I buy into the league a lot more now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think Adam Silver is the GOAT. Yeah, Adam Silver done. is the greatest commissioner of our time. I think he's done a done a great job. I okay. absolutely agree with that. Again, we can talk about Adam Silver on another topic, yeah. but what I was gonna bring up is King James, the leader of our league, really speaking up. And not only speaking up, calling people out, right? Calling people out for not understanding you know, what his kind of history has gone through, Yeah. right? Um, You know, one of the first things that he said when, you know, George Floyd passed away is, why doesn't America love us too, right? That's one of the first things that he said and and posted, you know, the picture of I can't breathe t-shirt, you know? And I mean, that t-shirt was, we've seen that a long time ago, a few years back. You know, and we're we're bringing. They brought attention to it back in the day, and it's it's still happening. From such a powerful voice, not yeah. only in the NBA, not only in the sports world, but the entire world, right? Everyone knows LeBron James. Yeah. And I also respect him because he called out Drew Brees when Drew Brees made that statement about the flag, right? And that he doesn't agree. Drew Brees doesn't agree that anyone would disrespect, you know, or, or to anyone who would disrespect, disrespect the American flag. I like, right away, LeBron called him out. I mean, obviously a lot of athletes had to call out Drew Brees and, and help educate Drew Brees. Again, I love Drew Brees also, you know, great quarterback, Hall of Famer, champion. But what's so great is those type of comments are now being called out more now, more than ever. But it's not about calling them out. It's about you don't understand the pain the suffering of the people that came before us had to go through to get us to this point and even to this point we're still going through it i know i just didn't understand the the reasoning behind why he would say something like that especially because he has linemen that are black 
Like, yeah, I, if, I mean, Michael just, Thomas. It, well, yeah, in, just in general, but they're 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 blocking him, and he had the audacity to say something like that. Like, if I was a light man and I'm bitter about everything, I'd be like, hey, you guys can go past me, just knock the you know sack the hell I, out yeah, of yeah um, exactly Drew Brees. I, yeah that I would I would have that bitterness because he's not really understanding me. So it's very ironic that he he just he I mean. Did he really not think that he was going to get any backlash on that? That's that I, I just don't get it. I, I think it's the uneducated, you know, aspect of Drew Brees' comments, right? Like, and then he releases a statement and an apology a few days after, right? Um, in a video stating that I've spoken to my teammates, you know, my, the team, and I understand now what's happening. Like I have, I have a better understanding now, and and I want to be part of the solution. I'm an ally, and I want to be part of the solution. And I commend okay. them for doing that. Okay. And he also he also answered Donald Trump's tweet about him. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah. So Donald Trump tweeted saying, you know, why did Drew Brees, you know, oh I I I, I applaud Drew Brees for speaking out about the flag, you know, and and. I will not tolerate something in the lines of, you know, Trump saying he will not tolerate anybody respecting or disrespecting the American flag, right? Okay. And he was commending Drew Brees for speaking up about it. And then Drew, I think just yesterday, responds to President Donald Trump and says, Sir, we we need to get educated more. I didn't understand okay. what my black brothers were going through okay. until I said those comments. So, and he was calling out for Trump saying, I think we need to do more for them, you know? And did he respond to that? No, he did not. President Donald Trump has not responded to that, to, to, to my knowledge. Of course. Um, but, you know, so we, we, we see the positive tweets, you know, we see the positive, you know, um, information that our athletes are bringing forward to the world and letting everyone know, hey, there's a problem. You're either with us or against us. George Floyd's twin, one of his best friends is who? Do you know? No. Steven Jackson. You know who Steven Jackson is? NBA analyst yeah. as well. Exactly. Yeah. You you like Steven Jackson. Yeah. He's played a great career in the NBA. I was a big fan. I'm a big Indiana Pacers fan also. Reg Miller, shout out. Yeah. You know, but he's played for the, you know, but he was the one in the front lines letting everyone know if, if you know, you're either with us or you're against us, mm -hmm. you know? And, and you could feel the pain, right? But he was also bringing awareness. And I love how he brought up George's daughter, you know, in, in his shoulders and, you know, while she was, you know, kind of shouting, you know, my dad changed the world. I mean, which he did. Yeah. We, again, we could talk about George's past or whatever. We, we're not, we don't need to do that. But the fact that, you know, he really did bring the kind of the, the the spark that kind of you know changed everything and, and made everybody feel comfortable to really talk about the injustices that's been going on for years and years and years right so you know other things that we could talk about is unfortunately with the good stuff there's also certain tweets that have gotten some backlash right and an example of you know an NBA player that said something is Michael Porter Jr. that you know he plays for, um, he plays for the Nuggets. Okay. You know I think he's he's in his third year, coming in his third year. Um, but he got backlash for saying, "As much as you pray, you know, I think this was on his twi Twitter account. As much as you pray for George George's family, you gotta also pray for the police officers who are involved in this evil. As hard as it is, pray for them instead of hate them. Pray, pray. that God changes their hearts. Hold on." So we're, you know, so when you hear that from an athlete, like how do you, how would you feel, without find, without knowing any context prior to that tweet? He's saying pray for their evil. No, no, no. He said gotta also pray for the police officers who were involved in this evil. As hard as it is, pray for them instead of instead of hate them. I would just assume that he's just saying to give everybody forgiveness. Mm hmm. That's what I would assume, mm -hmm. but I, I would, 
I mean, if he's a good Christian man, I understand. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that, yeah, I could see a lot of backlash mm -hmm. in, in that statement. Yeah. I mean, Steven Jackson called him out saying, you, you know, young blood, like maybe you should shut up, you know, um, yeah. calling him out for being someone privileged, which I mean, he, he didn't really grow up poor. I'll say that, Okay. you know, he yeah. went to the best prep school. Okay. Um, got recruited pretty nicely you know i mean he's very talented very talented you know i wish the clippers picked him up you know but it, it it's just one of those things where it's one of those wrong timing i know what you meant and i know you mean well like your heart means really well but it was just wrong timing drew Brees, same thing right like an educated response but I, it's like but you you meant well for the your country you know, you meant well f to stand up for what you believed in. Yeah. But you you missed the mark on you missed the mark on understanding at least at least recognizing the pain of your African American brothers and sisters that was going out to war with you every single Sunday out there. Yeah. It was it was just ignorance. Like you just you just you're yeah. not educating yourself. Exactly. Yes. Based off of what like how you grew up and and that. Yes. And one of the tweet, uh, Instagram posts that pissed me off. Um, if I can talk about it, is um, this Malaysian former beauty queen. Okay. Uh, I think her name is Samantha. Samantha K. Tai. Okay. I think that's her Instagram name. I don't know. I don't know what she is. This is what she said on, uh, on her story. She says this. I don't live in America. It has nothing to do with me. But to me, it seems like white, quote unquote, whites won. And then this emoji right here. Because if you're angry, you're, you respond in rage and anguish. That means it has power over you. They have power over you. And then, hold on. She said, to the black people. Oh my gosh. Relax. Take it as a challenge. It makes you stronger. You chose to be born as a colored person in oh america for a reason to learn a certain lesson accept it as it is till now hunger and poverty still exist it is what it is it's inevitable best you can do is remain calm protect heart don't allow it to crumble that's your responsibility hold on it's not done of course, this is to the ones who understand this level and state of mind. Let me repeat that. Of course, this is to the ones who understand this level and state of mind. It's not for everyone. Everyone grows at a different rate. <laughs> I mean, like that is one of, if not the most ignorant things I've, I've heard an Asian person say in regards to the matter. Here's the thing, like, or anyone, if you are of Asian descent, um, I, I can speak on behalf of like Koreans in general, and they'll tell you that Korean people are probably one of the most racist, um, in, in like, it, it just in, in the our, Asian, in, 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 in Korea, like, I mean, being black in Korea, like I, I feel really, really bad. I think there are a lot of Asian countries, um, that have adapted like I think Japan has done a great, a better job. I'm not a great job, but a, a better job. You know, China, Taiwan, all these other countries, but Korea specifically, man, they they just are against like interracial dating and all that, and they still look down upon it. And this is like the older generation. I think the newer generation has really shifted. I'm very very glad, but it's because of these reasons, um, with protests and and making people aware, and that's the reason why it's getting better. And maybe for her, she grew up. You know with obviously not a lot of black influence around her and that's why she's making these judgments it's not to justify her answer at all what she said was really really you know messed up I'm, I'm just listening to it like it's just it's just one of those like dumb comments that someone makes and you're like man you are ignorant i just have to ignore you like that's just i when you're reading it i i didn't even know what to say like i'm just baffled you know um, and, and so it just shows you that a lot of the Asian communities 
need to be more aware as well too yeah like uh, exactly out in, out in Asia, they, they didn't live it um you know if we're saying that we didn't live it as well too especially during that t- the, during time i mean it, it there needs to be more of an awareness <laughs> I, I like how she goes Asia. it has it's nothing just, to do with me all right but to me it seems like the whites one so i was actually, has nothing to do with me no, i was actually reading this morning too so um there is a uh, K- K-pop star or ex-K-pop star. I'm not sure what, what she is now. Um, she's been touring in America, Amber Lou. She is from California. She was in a, a group called FX. And she was, I mean, um, she was saying stuff about like how like we need to educate ourselves and all that stuff too. But her fans actually like went against her on that. And it was, and, and this is what I mean, that there's so much ignorance out in Asia and around the world that, that people just don't understand mm-hmm. and she's I'm, I'm very very glad that she stood up for for you know uh black lives matter and, and very very like thankful that she did that especially with her platform that she has and obviously for for her like she, i'm glad that she also wrote that she didn't care yeah. she didn't care if you if you guys didn't want to follow me because of what i believe i really don't care about about any of that stuff like i'm glad that she still stood up for that because what social media and all that does is it conforms you um, to what you know other people say, and I'm so glad that she stood stood for um, you know what she believed in, you know. And she's she's here in Cali, like mm-hmm. she's been touring in the U.S. And I because of that reason too, like I've never really listened to like her K-pop stuff or anything like that. I support her a lot more, and, I, and I'd want to go to a show because of those reasons, because of what she stands for. So that's pretty cool stuff. I don't know. I think the the main word for me is empathy, right? It's, it, to me, it's it's two, actually it's two words. It's it's educate education and empathy. Yeah. Right. Like that's uh, to me that's what sums it up for me. Yeah. Because, I mean, I came here uh, like around 2000 when I was like 13, right? Barely spoke English. Didn't really know what the culture is. Right. Grew up in the Bay for like a few months before moving down to SoCal. And I was my my first exposure really was minorities like my first the, the the first friends that i had that really brought me in um when i was having lunch by myself at car intermediate in santa Ana, was you know was my my boy juan like he, he was like hey you want to come eat here like so and from there my first african-american friend ever is charles and charles is part of my you know it's gonna be part of my court right like and me and Charles have a great relationship. I mean, he was going to do the show with us, you know, but, um, and I, I have, su- you know, I have such like, and I grew up in hip hop. I grew up in R and B, you know, basketball. Right. I mean, heavily influenced by our African American brothers and sisters. Right. And just that culture in itself, you know? So I was brought up with them. You know what I mean? And, and I, and, and I could always relate with them. You know, um, not so much about the pain that their past has, you know, they've gone through what they've gone through individually. But whenever they do talk about those certain things, I, I somewhat understand because I've kind of gone through similar items, but not to a deep rooted situation that they've gone through or what their families have gone through, you know. But I, I've always been taught by my parents to, hey, just educate yourself and, and empathize, empathize with what they've gone through. You can't judge them because of what they've gone through, you know, and, you know, you, you just have to, you just have to learn their history. You have to learn, you know, why they think a certain way and, 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 and why the society view them a certain way is because history taught us, you know, history has institu- institutionalized the way we think of minorities, yeah. you know, especially the African-American communities. Yeah. You brought up in the car, um, uh, something about like K-pop and White Lives Matter, and I, I didn't want to hear anything from you until we we did the show. Um, I don't know anything about that, mm-hmm. but I just kept telling you, don't don't tell me now. Like, let's do the show, and then like I, I, I want to know about it during the show. Yeah, because I know we have tendencies to just talk, um, just like about everything. And so, uh, what what did that mean exactly? So I, I didn't know this, but I guess. Um, you know, K-pop fans are known as K-pop stands. K-pop stands? Yeah, stands like a S-T-A-N-S, stand, like 
you know, okay. Stan Lee. Like, like Stan together? I don't know, Stans. Um, the Stans or Stan, S-T-A-N's? K-pop, no, you know. But um, I guess, yeah, so. Okay, if, if you're a, a, a K-pop person, if you guys can shoot us a DM and let us know yeah, what yeah, that yeah. actually means. Like, like I'm, I'm is, it like a group? I, is it like a group? And I don't even yeah, know. Yeah, I thought you knew. You, yeah, you know, yeah. you're, you're I'm, I'm the closest thing. American, but, you know, Korean American yeah. R&B singer over here. But I, I have no clue. Yeah. I mean, K-P's, K- K-pop, K-pop stands. Stand. Anyways. Okay. Um, so what ended up happening is for them um, to, sh- to show the support and to, you know, to help with the entire movement. What they decided to do is um, they decided to infiltrate the hashtag white lives matter or I think blue lives matter. Right. They decided to infiltrate it with um, <laughs> with fan camps of um, of all these K-pop singers. So like their videos. <laughs> so if you actually hashtag, <laughs> if you hashtag right now, if you're on your phone, if you hashtag white lives matter, please tell me what you see real quick. Because so in reality, if you if you hashtag white lives matter, what would you see? I'm asking you, what would, what would you assume you would be seeing if you hashtag white lives matter, Genu? White supremacists. Right, white supremacists, right? You would see white supremacist posts. But what is the first things you see when you hashtag white lives matter? <laughs> I see Sailor Moon. All right. A uh, bunch of K-pop stuff. Bunch of K-pop videos, right? Crazy. You got a lot of BTS on You here. got a lot of BTS in there, you know? What, what does that have to do with white lives matter? Please tell me. Nothing. That is hilarious. Uh, that's pretty awesome, though. You right. Said, you said Blue Lives Matter? Yeah. So, you know, it, it, one of the things there is to send what, them what all. What does that mean, Blue Lives Matter? Um, not sure, really. Okay. Um, send them all. Make their jobs as hard as possible. Get them frustrated. Make them take down the app. That was on Twitter. Who who, who started this then? Was it um, I don't like know, some fan? It was just a fan? <laughs> the, it says here, the radicalization of the stands seems to have begun on may 31st which was about a week ago when the dallas police department tweeted a request for users to submit videos of illegal protest activity on twitter or their own iwatch app so what they decided to do is infiltrate just to make sure that cops wouldn't be there for the protest so i get what i get what they were doing but also, it's like, what if those protests turn violent? So I got to play devil's advocate. Like, like, what if those protests turn really violent and people got killed? You just made it hard for police officers to assist in, 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 in possibly creating order or safety for the community. So that, yeah, it's very that's, small. that's up for debate. Exactly. Too. So the Blue Lives Matter is, is based off the police. That's why it's Blue Lives Matter um, when I looked that up. But yeah, I mean, that's that's up for debate because obviously this is the whole issue was based off of police brutality. So how safe can a, a, a minority or, or you know, black person on the street really feel safe when there is an actual cop that you're not even sure if you're going to be it's, safe around? Isn't if, it so funny what you saw? Th- yeah, no, that, that that's insane. That's insane. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to come back and Migs, I want to ask you some questions. Uh, maybe you can, you can think about it during the break um, on what needs to happen. What in your thoughts? This is after be this. Good. Yeah. After this whole uh, protest and there's some policies that are going to be in place. What should actually happen? Do these policies actually work? And so when we come back, we'll talk about those things. You are listening to Kickspot.